Hello my friends, today we're back in Luminar Neo and we are going to, in this tutorial I'm going to give you a complete masking guide. We'll go through everything you can do with mask, how to use it and um, most importantly I'm going to show you something really quick that you were only able to do beginning with today with mask and we'll just do a little composite, we'll change the background on an image. So let's see how we will do that. I will start with this image because it's a winter scene and I am going to go to edit and then into my layer panel I will click plus and I will add another image as an overlay. I added this image because I think it's funny this guy is in a bathing suit and our main image is with snow and it's really cold and here is something we can do with masking now. Now we can use masking on our top layer and to our overlays. So if I go to masking and go to mask AI Luminar Neo is going to analyze our image and find a human. As you can see, it found sky, flora, and architecture. I don't know where he found those things because none of those exist in this image. But anyhow, I will click on human and you will see it did find our human. And we can mask now our human. And when I go to properties, there we go. We change our background. Now clicking on properties, I can resize this guy because he is too big. And I can make it smaller just for fun. I can do something like that. Now, obviously, this is a bad composite. The colors don't match. We would have to go and make him a lot cooler and, you know, change a whole bunch of things. But we did kind of change the background to create a composite. As you can see, the mask, it's not perfect, but that is okay. Because when you are in layer properties, you can go to masking. You can take your brush tool. You can make it a lot smaller. And then with erase, of course... You can go and touch up your composite and just make it as perfect as you can or you want. Depends on how much time you want to spend on this. It did not select anything here in between the legs, so I would have to go do that. And that was not a good erase because my brush was too soft and it went over the pants. So I will paint it back. And then in order to erase it, I like to have the, st the strength at 100% but the softness just around 20 and that seems to do a better job and I'm going to zoom in at 100% and let's see now I'm going to paint over here and it's not perfect if you choose a background that's a similar color with your subject that helps a lot by camouflaging your mistakes and your masking doesn't really have to be perfect because you won't be able to see it so much. Anyhow, command zero to fit to screen and there you go. So that's the thing that you can do now with the new uh, software update of Luminar Neo. But let's go a step back. Let's go back to our catalog and really learn a little bit about our masking especially if you're a beginning and you have not used masking before this is for you but before we get into the masking i just want to let you know that skylum did announce that they have some summer sales right now and um it, i think they begin the summer sales starts today yes and um if you do decide to buy luminar neo please do use my affiliate link into my description because at no cost to you, I do earn a commission and, you know, it's very helpful for the channel. Again, only if you feel like you need this program and you want to buy it, go ahead. Do not buy it because of, you know, I'm asking for it. It's not like that. Just buy it if you need it. Let's learn about masking. When you go into your edits, you have your tools on the right side. Now, with every tool, when you open it on it, comes masking. When we click on masking, we have a few different ways to mask our image. The first way to mask our image is the brush tool. And this is one that you would use all the time. And let's say we just want to brush the light and let's say we want to brighten the face of this person. We will just paint with our brush and then you will go to adjustments and raise the exposure. And just like that, we brighten our subject's face before and after, before and after. When you are into your masking, you have your brush, for example, and you can paint with it. That's how we did it over here. Or you can erase. So if you went too much with your 
masking, you can go ahead and erase parts of it. Then you have the size of your brush, which is makes your brush bigger and smaller. You have your softness of your brush. This is how much your feathering is. If you look at my brush, when I have softness 0%, it only has one outer line. That means the effect it's going to apply 100% from the center to the edge and there is no feathering, so you'll get a harsh line. If you have softness at 100%, then from the middle to the first line, you get the effect at 100% and then from the second line to the outer line, that's where the feathering is happening and is gradually decreasing the uh, effect until it gets to zero. Strength, it's how much of this effect you want to add and that at 100% you see the effect at 100%, at zero you don't see anything. So that is about masking brush. Let's move on to the next example and that is a linear gradient. Now a linear gradient, it's used a lot for maybe lightening or darkening the sky or the foreground and it's really easy to do. All you have to do is just click and drag down or up or whichever direction you want to work with. In this case, let's see, I'm going to reset this. Let's look at the image again. In this example, let's say I want to darken the sky and the water behind my person, but leave the person bright as it is. So for that, I would go to my linear gradient and watch this. If I click somewhere higher in the image and drag, it feathers it a lot. You see how it's very red over here and then we get this like soft, soft feathering. If I click, I'm going to re uh, reset this. If I click right here on the edge and pull down, I have to go my linear gradient again. If I click right here on the edge and pull down, now we are not getting that uh, feathering effect and it's pretty much 100% all the way from this corner to here and then just a tiny little bit of feathering on here. So it's important to know how to feather your gradients to get a better look. For this image, because I want to darken the sky and the water, I'll just do a little bit of feathering and I'll just pull it from here to here. I go over the rock a little bit just to blend it a little bit better and not get any halos. Now here is a little trick. If you do not want to, let's say I want to darken it, like I said, and I am darkening, but you see it darkens my person too. Now if I do not want to darken my person, here is what I would do. I would go to masking. And I know we have not talked yet about the mask AI, but if you go to mask AI, it will find your person. And then when you click on it, it selects the person. So now we have our gradient and our person selected. And if I click human again, it will take it away from our uh, selection. And as you can see now the gradient it's applied, but it does not affect our human. I'll go back to adjustments and it did not make a good selection on the hair, but I will show you how to fix, fix that. You go to masking and you take your regular old brush and with the strength, I'm just going to go with about 46% and I want to paint this effect in it. I do not want to go to 100% because if you remember, we have some feathering in here and we want it to look more normal and that was not enough. I will go to 71%. I will paint on it. I just want to blend it pretty good without looking obvious. And that looks a lot better. We could have went maybe even a little bit more, maybe 78% in this region. And that is better. And now maybe here too. I see the hair didn't really got selected very well. And there you go. Now we darkened the background and we kept our person pretty bright and that's how we would use it, masking in that instance. Let's go back. I will open develop again, go back to masking. And so we know how to use the brush tool. We know how to use linear gradient. Let's try a radial gradient. A radial gradient is awesome for when you want to apply on, let's say, Brighten the face again. The radiant gradient is great. And the way you do it, you just drag from the center. And you see now the effect is being applied to the background. But if you invert it, you have this invert mask over here. Now it just affects the face. And we can go increase the exposure or whatever we need to do. And radiant gradient is a great one because it has that feathering. So you get a little bit more natural result than just using a brush. 
One um, instance where I use my radial gradient a lot is for applying an um, vignette. And I don't like to do a black vignette. I feel like that's just too ordinary. I usually like to do a color vignette. And the easiest way to do a color vignette is to go to toning. And then you take the amount to 100%. And in this case, I will choose the shadows because most of the outer parts of my image are darker. And I'll increase the saturation at 100% to see what I'm doing. And then just pick a color that I like. And this blue will say it looks great. And then I'll decrease the amount to something like that. And the saturation, not the amount, I'm sorry. And then I can add a mask and this is where my radiant gradient will really shine because I can just feather it really nicely and apply that blue tone all over. Let me just squish this a little bit. If you go here on the sides, you can pull it down and make it more oval so it's not so round. And then I can mess with the size. And now we will get a blue vignette if I go to my adjustments. You see we have a very nice blue vignette. It is too saturated so you can go and turn saturation even lower if you want to. And there you go. This is our before and after, before and after. And then one other thing you can do with mask. We have this um, vignette now. I can go into my masking and if I go into mask actions, I can copy this mask. So now that I have this mask and I made my vignette blue, I can also darken it by going to develop and I will go into masking, mask action, and now I get to paste it. And then I can go to my adjustment and I can take down the exposure and you see it's only applying on my vignette, the mask that I copied from my previous adjustment. So let's close this open develop again go back to mask we talked about the brush we talked about linear gradient radial gradient and now let's go to mask ai mask ai as you saw it analyzes our image and it found a few things in our image let's see what it found we know it found a human that's the mask for it we know it found a sky it's not very accurate it selects a lot of the water in it architecture not architecture at all that was a complete fail water that did not find it very well as well mountains well no mountains natural ground this should be our stone we found some of it not a lot. oh i'm sorry that natural ground is not our stone it should have been like trees and grass and stuff and made made ground that's the stone but it, that one it did not select it properly at all either so you have all these um, AI masking. Sometimes they work pretty well and sometimes they do not work at all well. So then you'll have to go back to your brush or linear gradient and you know whatever other uh, masking that you can use to get the results you are seeking. Now that we saw what brush, linear gradient, radial gradient and mask AI do, let's look into the action really quick in here and for that i am going to go through every button and explain to you what it does fill it fills the whole image with our mask and we can see it right now but if i go to show we can see this is our mask then if i go to clear it will clear our mask whatever mask we have we can just clear it and start again if we have a selection let's say i will do a radial gradient here then we can go to our mask action and we can invert our mask. So now we have our center of the radial gradient selected. And then if we invert it, now we have the outer side of the gradient selected. We saw how we can copy and paste an action. And then this is your show of your mask. You can turn it on and off. Sometimes it's distractive to have it. But then some other times you really need to see what you're doing and it's good to turn it on and off so you know what you're doing. As I said before, every tool has their masking attached to it so you can mask anything from any tool. And with the latest software update from Luminar Neo version 1.07, now you can um, 
use masking on your layers as well and this is a very very good improvement because now we can make composites and select our subject and change the background as we saw in the first example i hope this was useful and you learned something new today thank you so much for watching my name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.